Ladies and gentlemen, MWC is pretty much over. I'm Anton Dino. I'm Jaime Rivera, and let's go through the things that we liked and the things we didn't like from the show. So the first thing I liked was Sony. So the Sony Xperia Z2 and the Sony Xperia M are great devices, but I'm really hoping that the Xperia Z2, which is pretty much the Xperia Z1, fixes my main concern with the Z1, which was the camera quality. Of course, we had the same ruggedized build, the same aspect, larger screen, smaller bezels. It's a phone which I like, but I'm not sure I want to get it until I, I address my main concern, which is camera quality. Now, I'll tell you this much. From the guy that reviewed the Xperia ZL, man, this display on the Z2 is gorgeous. It is in your face gorgeous. You know, even if the angles were bad, I just liked it so much that I would love for this to be my next phone. And we're happy to see that Sony is continuously improving on its display, starting from the good old Z back in the days, which had a meh display. Yeah. We're working their, uh, they're working their way up. The Z1 had a great display, the Z1 Compact, the best a better display and now the Z2 an even better triluminous display. And yeah, even in the case of the tablet Z2, we're kind of disappointed at the fact that it's a low resolution tablet, but you don't really get a lot of rugged tablets out there, so it would be a good option for you to buy later on. Up next, let's talk about Nokia. We never thought we would hear Stephen Elop say Android. He didn't only say Android, he launched three phones running Android. Now this is a fork version. You saw the hands-on videos, links in the description for details. We never thought we'd see this, and it's really interesting because according to Nokia, Nokia, this is the platform that's going to make people reach Windows Phone, which is something I really don't understand. Right, Tony? So Android will help Nokia and Microsoft through the services bundle. But what I did not like, and maybe because my expectations were too high, based on the rumors we have heard, there was no Lumia announcement. I was really looking forward for a high-end Lumia device. I mean, MWC is Nokia and Microsofters. Of course, we had the Windows Phone 8.1 announcement, but we really wanted to see that that maybe last big bang from Nokia, saying that this will be probably the last Lumia which we're gonna do before the Microsoft takeover, and it has this, this, and this, but instead we just got the Ashas and the Xs. Yeah, this was pretty much an entry-level uh, event, and again, so far, we are really hoping to see if Nokia is going to give us more Android and higher-end devices, even though they said they wouldn't. Again, the XL was not that bad, but you'll get have to see it for yourself. And then there was LG. We heard about the G Pro 2, the follow-up for last year's Optimus G and the competition for last year's Note 3. Uh, LG pretty much uh, announced the phone with all of its features before the show. We had a hands-on. Actually, their booth is close by. It is a good phone. It is a fast phone. But is it really a competitor to the Note 3? I mean, it tries to be a phablet, but it's missing that single point for multitasking, which turns the phone into a phablet. Stylish. I know, and it kind of reminds me of Huawei, for example. We saw their MediaPad X1. Uh, it is probably the tablet, tablet that probably everybody wanted because, yeah, it is a 7-inch tablet that's made in a phone's form factor. It's a really cool device, but then again, we still need to see more credibility from Huawei when it comes to build quality, when it comes to the design of their UI. We saw the same with ZTE. Again, most of the updates that we got today were just updates. A lot of iterative updates, and probably, probably Huawei was the only one that did something out of the ordinary with the Talkband B1 or with the MediaPad X1. But yeah, these some of these Chinese companies need to step their game up a bit when it comes to the high-end uh, sector of form factors and everything. And we do hope to see, you know, Huawei at least succeed with the MediaPad X1. I really can't wait to get a review unit of that one. Yeah, uh, and also ZT, who is actually close by, had their grand memo too. Now, ZTE is trying to focus on the mid-range, cheaper phablet market. We've seen recently the Boost Max yeah. on Boost Mobile in the US, and the Grand Memo 2 is just, it's just that, a mid-ranger phablet. But HTC also has a phablet, which is a mid-ranger, but Jaime, I know you're amped about it. Yeah, but I want to give them a full segment just for them, honestly. Okay. I'm going to be very specific about HTC. If you saw our video intro, we didn't even talk about HTC. We knew that we had an event, but we were not expecting them to announce anything, honestly. We knew that they had their March 25th event, and you know, I'm going to be very honest with you. I am very wowed by HTC, and I haven't even seen the M8. I'm specifically talking about this Desire H16. This is actually the first time that I desire a Desire ever since the Desire HD so many 
many years ago. Um, it is a phablet, it is a big phone, but there is nothing cheap about it. Even though the specifications are low, it runs KitKat. And remember, KitKat's designed for low specifications. The phone was beautiful. Sadly, we couldn't talk about the UI for specific reasons that HTC asked us. But, you know, if this is the Desire 816, if this is the mid-tiered phone, man, can you imagine that M8? Unless you're a type of person who hates the iPhone 5C because the Desire 816 has the same polished, shiny plastic on the back, uh, then in that case, that's not for you. Yeah. But, uh, else yeah. it's an excellent phone. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think the Desire 816 was a great way for HTC to say, hey, wait up. Build up the anticipation. Build up the anticipation because this M8 is going to be hot. And we all want HTC to survive. Guys, the Pocket PC ecosystem was born out of an HTC partnership almost 15 years ago. We want this company, which pioneered the industry, to grow. And yeah, this is kind of the HTC that we were hoping for, even though we didn't think we were going to get much, and we actually did. And finally, for the hottest tickets of MWC 2014, uh, I have to say it, the Galaxy S5 was the hottest thing here. Not necessarily because it is hot, meaning it's actually just an S4 with another back cover and a couple of extra sensors, but it's gonna be the hottest phone of the year. Samsung's got the marketing power, the marketing push, and they're gonna sell millions of these phones. I'm actually sad to say this because I feel that Samsung could have tried harder, but then again, we've been bashing Samsung for years about so many gimmicks. I loved Michael Fisher's an editorial he's like wait a second guys this is actually what we wanted we wanted a samsung with less gimmicks and better focus on things that actually matter and they kind of delivered what we were asking for i guess we were just looking for a better looking device how about you tony in my book the s5 and the z2 are really the two hottest things because if you take only specifications on paper i'm not talking about the looks on paper the z2 is actually the better device uh, if it's looking better or worse than the s5 that is completely up to you so coming back to the s5 i really think that we have to somehow not fall into the trap of bashing Samsung because of the rumors which have amped the anticipation, which has have created the buzz. We've heard about those 2K screens and whatever cameras. No, the S, Samsung with the S5 is doing whatever they want to do, they need to do for their specific audience, those who are fans of the brand of Samsung. And it's, it's got the same looks, yeah. It's got a ruggedized build, it's waterproof, it's got a heart rate sensor, it's got a better specification than the S4. So I think that the S5 is a great device. Uh, maybe the the only one that could top it this year would be the Sony Xperia Z2 and yeah. whatever HTC will do next month. Yeah, I like the Z2 as well. But anyways, that leads us to the question of this video. What was the hottest device for you? Which one did you like the most from our 50 videos at MWC? And oh my. still have a lot of more and in the We still got more videos coming up. But leave us a comment. Tell us which one did you like the most. Do you agree with our opinions or not? In our case, again, the Z2 would honestly be the hottest phone, even though it looks so much like the Z1. But leave us a comment down below. We can't wait to hear from you some more. I want to specifically thank everybody for sticking with us on our YouTube channel, on our social media, and of course on our main site. Uh, we will head out to the airport now, but we will be back, as in Pocket now, we'll be back to Europe for IFA in August or September, whenever that happens. I'm not sure which combination that will be, but we will definitely be here. As of for Barcelona, saying goodbye from MWC, this was Anton Dinay. This was Jaime Rivera. It was a great show. Make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera at Anton Dinag, A-N-T-O-N-D-N-A-G-Y. And I know a lot of you have been asking for the Pocket Out Daily for the past week. This is actually like the hottest time for news, but we were here covering the show. So expect the Pocket Out Daily Romanian edition as of next week, right? That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. See you soon.